Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Horizon. Mm. Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden Wilds DLC. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be rough. This is gonna be rough on me. I do not want to hear this talk from you again. Doubt is heavier than a week snow. Forgive me, my chieftain. We will be ready for the next attempt. But this will not be an attempt. It must be done. Do you understand? My chieftain. Good. Hello. Outlander. I suppose you wish to speak. <laughs> Boy, do I. Look at all these things I want to say. I'm surprised he's talking to me, for one thing. Um, and... Why? I, I'm just really curious why he wants to keep throwing people at this. Like, half his Warwick or whatever is... is is gone, is dead. Like, you keep throwing people at it. Like, what's the point? Like, what's the idea behind this? Uh, You're set on going back to the mountain? I have put my word to it. Even with the risks being so great? The risk of what? Death? It would be a worse fate to bow our heads to the challenge. Oh, yeah. And say too much. That's true, that's true. They can't give up it's a challenge so like culturally they would rather die that death isn't a big deal to them did your Warwick come from this place no he rallied most of our hunters from across Banur to face the threat of the demon but I was born here and stayed to fight the Karja when others retreated into the mountains a few of my old warriors remain with me those who survived this Damon, you talked about. If you are hardy enough, you can venture out and see the signs yourself. It has changed the machines, made them fiercer, stronger. But what is it? A matter for the shamans to debate. <laughs> yeah. It's also when we meet the Banuk in that little when you get that quest, when you go to the when you go to Meridian and there's that guy who wants you to go talk to the Banuk who have this like spirit thing going on with the machines in the area and they talk about that a little bit Aurea knows about this Damon. where would I talk to her she does a shaman's work that is not for the eyes and ears of others certainly not an outlanders they, the, the shaman and the well she's not a chieftain but there's like a warrior there and they kind of butt heads there are other Warax in Song's Edge, too? Yes. The village has its own life for all Banuk who need trade or shelter. After the war ended, it sprang up from what was once a campsite, quick as the bloom between frosts. Perhaps it will last until the Karja seek war again. What's he doing? Well, I guess that's it, then. Good. I prefer deeds to words. Right. <laughs> But I've heard the Nora can handle their bows. What? Handle what? As long as you've got a skilled shaman on the trail with you. A good hunt means a good harvest. Okay. <laughs> a good hunt means a good harvest. I was like, it doesn't really look like smoke because the main shape of it isn't changing. It's almost, it's like... It should be like billowing out at the top and it's just kind of stopping up there and it's really weird. Like it's honestly weird looking. Maybe there's an explanation for it, but I don't know. Oh, gosh. I thought, I honestly thought this was like a, something like this, but it's person. Let's see. It was optional to talk to him, but I am going to go talk to this woman. To the woman. Hello, fellow woman. Prob maybe? Oh, never mind. You're Banuk. You seem sad, stranger. I heard you mention a flood? Yes. A sudden deluge, without rain or melt to explain it. I'm Lalai, the drummer of Deep Din. Or at least I was, until it disappeared under the waters. Deep Din? What's that? A hollow, carved out by the old ones. A chamber, a basin, and a musical instrument all at once. My life, my calling. I'd explain it by playing for you if I could. 
but its pipes are deep under the water now. Well, that's odd. Also, I love her helmet, like a little bunny rabbit. It looks like a bunny rabbit, like sort of like totem inspired. So Deep Din is a place and a musical instrument? Yes. Pipes that carry a perfect tone beneath a sonorous basin. A wondrous edifice the old ones used to carry music far and wide. During the war, my father played the pipes to rally the Banuk against the Karja. I'm the drummer now. But our battles are few and far between. Mostly I play for the joy of it. Or to remember my family. Of course, if the waters don't recede, what's the point of joy? Or remembering. I mean, there's more to life, but I get it. So the waters came fast. One day it was dry. The next, the nearby river had risen and the entire basin was flooded. I don't understand. Somebody made a dam. There was no rain, not even any clouds, and yet the river rose higher than I'd ever seen it. And there it remains. Somebody has built a dam. A flood without rain. That is strange. Where is this place? I'll have a look if I'm in the area. Just northwest of here. Look all you like, but I don't see what good it'll do. The floodwaters aren't going anywhere. How does one ask a river to relent? By breaking a dam. A dam was made, therefore I must break it. I need to also find them. Mm hmm Yes, I need to find you. The Banuk have painted the same way for ages. It suited us fine. Why must Sakuli meddle with it? No, Sakuli. We've painted. When the old ones were fresh in their graves <gasps> and our numbers were still small, it was she who led us through the frozen wastes. We also remember the ravenous tribe who delighted in sucking the marrow from our broken bones. Everywhere Banukai and Hawarak fled, the ravenous tribe went far behind. Seeking a way to defeat them, Banukai went into the wastes and let the wind whip her cheeks. And when the cold brought sleep, she dreamt of light. She saw it behind the world, a great calm and shinsu and she saw something new. Herds of machines, each filled with the same blue light. When she woke, she knew which star to follow. She walked for many days and nights until she arrived at a temple built from sparkling ice. At the gates of the temple, she was met by the machines from her dreams. Who bowed to her as she her no painted cliff. Inside, Banukai discovered the blue light bubbling from a hole in the snowy earth like a spring. You bid me come, she said. My people need Shamans aid. From all over, Will you provide it? To study the machines moment. whispered to Banakai. We go to the light globes. For oh, we are its chosen vessels. There is darkness in your heart. Stand before it. It cannot hold the light for long. Some do the frozen tone. Carry it to your peace like you must. But the cost peace will be harmony. great. Banukai waded into the pool. The light reared like a nest of snakes and struck Banukai, oh. piercing her skin. Oh my gosh. Filling her up. That's so cool. Banukai did not scream, though she was in agony. Banukai did not collapse, though her limbs shook. She climbed from the pool and carried the light inside her. She marched toward home and the machines marched behind her. Just a week ago, As she walked, the light struggled to push its way out of her, but the machines were there to aid her. She sewed her body shut with their mm -hmm, mm -hmm. patched herself with their metal, and kept the light within. When she arrived, the forces of the ravenous tribe had surrounded the camp. Although the light had left her with a thousand wounds, Banakai charged. And because she held the light, the machines followed. The ravenous tribe killed the sky's getting lighter. Those in camp Don't rushed to join in battle. They gathered pieces of the fallen machines and from them fashioned weapons. And it was with these that Banakai's people repaid the suffering the ravenous tribe had wrought upon them. When quiet descended. I heard of a shaman once. Drank the machine. Banakai finally fell. The machines bowed their heads from her wear act. The light she held within her drifted from the wounds and rose to the sky. 
forgotten for just a moment before life left her. Banakai knew the truth of the so, light. Machines in the south suffer their own sacrifices. I wonder what sort of. We remember Banakai. The first to crawl from the cave beneath the world. Brought the machines to us. When we Here speak the name the of our tribe, tall neck trapped the frost figures. We remember. It's been there as long as I have been alive. And we They're will not. Hunting forget. competitions at the frost figures for generations. Okay, that was legit. That was honestly really, really cool. A phenomenal. Like that voice, like the storyteller voice, super, super good. And like he changed his voice for like the machines and everything. And then like he had like the mnemonic sort of devices of like the moving, like his arms in specific ways and like the fire effects. That was really cool. That was really, really cool. Honestly, I really liked that. Also, give me Banuk lore. Give me Banuk tidbits. I'll eat them up. But not like the ravenous tribe, apparently. I wonder who that was. We remember. Oh, uh, I was doing this. That's sound to sleep to, not live to. Some say Sakuli. What? I do not know. Uh... Oh, I don't have enough for it. Oh boy. That one's cool. That one's really, really cool. But I need, I need blue gleam except for this. <sighs> Slow health recovery over time. I want. Okay, let's see if I can sell. Wait, what do I need? Slag shine. Do you have to have any of that? <laughs> no, no, I bet you don't. Interesting. Okay. Let me sell slag shine glass. I can hopefully get that up here while I'm running around, but I do have enough of everything else. That's good. Just need four more. That's all. The Damon's markings are fierce, but a skilled hunter doesn't let fear. Oh, I'm glad my father isn't around. It would torment him to see his legacy. Yeah, I get it. I understand. But where's the woman? The other the woman, capital W. We should not pile his father's guilt onto the new Karja King's shoulders. These are different times. To sing is to perform a ritual. I see a child over there, I think. Oh my gosh, a real, a real. I don't see what's wrong with the traditional paintings. Sakuli? So everybody's mad at somebody okay, named Sakuli who's messing with the painting style. That's very Egyptian. The Egyptian style did not change much, and when it did, it actually reverted back at one point. Because uh, they, they're very traditional. Again, I, the Egyptians are actually a good example of another people who grew up in a fairly harsh environment that had a very strict, like, cultural system. The god king pharaohs are a good example. One day, the stone of the dim is dry. Where? Where's the? Where's the woman? Is she up there? Where do you where do you hide your daughter? Hmm. Greetings. About that free advice, Regrant. For you, I'll give it twice. But next time, I'll start charging. Never mind. See you around, Regrant. Hope so. I like returning customers. But I can't buy from you. Off a piece of the banana. None will forget the red raids, but perhaps. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that she's over there. If there were any more exclamation point quests here, they would show up. But I really... 
I love their designs. So pretty. Hearts. But they're very portable, right? Like, even more than anybody else that we've met so far. Uh, like, they have some of these that are, you know, like, sort of shacks and shanties, and they have, like, I was looking at this, too, which means, like, this is, like, a fairly established area that they live in, but the the homes and stuff, these are probably, like, storage and shopping and stuff like that, and then these are, like, the homes, you know, and, like, while they, these would be more difficult, I think, to carry around, you could break these down, because also you don't need to bring the poles with you, necessarily, um, I know wiki ups uh, in like Western North America, they don't need to bring like the sticks with them. They just use like juniper tree, juniper tree like branches and stuff like that, and the juniper trees themselves. Um, but you can find those wherever you go, right? So you don't need to necessarily bring the poles with you because they're not like super. You never like, stop proving yourself. How can not, I like all you gotta do is like you don't even have to. They don't even do anything with the wiki ups really. Like at least the ones that I've seen like out in the field, um, they just like kind of take the branches, maybe rip some of them off, you know, they don't really smooth them out like this, like they did on the planes, Fire. but these, like, Tents. you know, take it, you cut the branches off, and then you wrap them up together, Whatever and you can do that wherever, from that you know, run. you don't need to necessarily bring, that's what I was trying to get at, you don't need to bring the poles with you necessarily for something like this, especially because it doesn't appear that these guys have any pack animals, they had to carry themselves. So you would, you know, these would wrap up pretty small or put them on sleds type thing and you can carry it on a sled. Sure, the Osiram Mac top. But send them to the Okay, if I want to learn more about how this daemon affects the machines, I've got to find Maria. To do that, I need to talk to her apprentice who followed the river north. Yeah, but I also want to find the daughter. Outlander! Mm. Wait, wait a moment. Shaman. That weapon of yours, Outlander, that spear, I can see the blue light upon it. You're not the first to take an interest in it. I've made it myself. Your own design. Mm. Yet you are not a shaman. Uh, no. More of a tinker? A tinker does not understand the spark in the metal, the song in the metal like this. But it could be improved upon, Ooh. modified with the help of the old ones. Far north of here, there is a cave, a shaft in the snow. Within it is a nest of metal birds. No. Find a bird that hasn't been stripped by oh, shaman's past. they're dead. Look for a rail inside it, the length of your spear. That's all I can tell you. Get a rail from some metal birds in a cave. Sounds perfectly normal. Thanks. Oh, this is where they make their dyes, maybe? I mean, this is a this is a hot spring. We must have left them right well, I... We they are. Look at, look at, look at, look at. Can I... Will it hurt me if I get in? Nope. <laughs> in some games, those will heal you. This is really cool. This is very gorgeous. It seems like, though, the water would get muddied pretty quickly. It's not a very super efficient system. It would just all be orange after a while. Oh, yo! Oh, that's right, this is Yellowstone! Somebody told- I was like, yo, this looks like Mammoth Hot Springs. At least a little bit. Up in, um... Up in Yellowstone. National Park in Wyoming. And uh, this is a very tiny version of it. But yes, I forget that this is... Uh, I just remembered, anyway, that uh, this takes place in Yellowstone. This DLC. So that's cool. Where's the... Maybe she's one of the mm, pygmy collector. What? I need to go back up there. I need to find this woman. No time to host outsiders. Where once the nuke were dragged to move it. Holy cow. I was like, hmm, yeah. where's this pigment person? When the old ones were fresh in their graves and our <laughs> were still 
that was when they came fresh out of the, not the cauldrons, that's where machines come from, but you know, the human version. Anyway, the pigment collector is up there. How pigment collector? Oh. I must meet you. Our hands are full, Outlander. Okay. We don't have time to show you around. Okay, I didn't. I'm just wandering around my own. Look at all this ice Everyone encrusted on my clothing. Anyone else? Trick is finding and cultivating. Oh, Ooh. Okay. I'm like, oh, I'm only here for the story. And then they're like, here's some lore. And I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. Hang on, I want to see this. Okay. So cool. So cool, so cool, so cool, so cool. Why are you so high up here? Well, that's a silly question. It's because the pigment collector is up here where the big painting is happening. Obviously. Not a very good trade route, though. Quite a view you've got up here. It's a useful perspective. How fleeting we are when the world is so wide. From up here, you can see how the light paints across the land. Ever changing. That's a lesson. Mm. All our marks will pass. That outlook sounds a little depressing for a painter. Haven't met many artists. Have <laughs> Song's Edge needs new stories. I scrubbed its past off this rock no! to start a new. But a new start needs new colors. No! Fresh pigments, like none have seen. You scrubbed off the pre-existing rock art that was there. Are you like I okay, actually? This is I can't. It's it's painful to me to hear, but I have seen, especially last year when I was going on my little rock art tour of like southern Utah, um, it's not uncommon at all for later generations to at least add two existing rock art panels. So you'll have like two different styles that are like a thousand years apart or like, you know, 500 years or so apart or more, or you'll have like two or three or four because they all come to the same panel and they, you know, basically it's like a genealogy of rock art, you know, and it's, it's really amazing, but erasing it completely. But that also does happen, right? When it's like, um, at least it's postulated, right? That, um, when like new tribes come in or when it's been long enough and they look at it and they're like, that doesn't, that's not relevant anymore. You know, that, that story is no longer relevant in, in any way or whatever it is, you know, whatever it's representing. Or we don't know what that is. We're going to erase it, like, like scratch it out, essentially, put something on top of it, you know. Um, I feel like the ones I've seen are ones that are modified or added to. But then again, if they had erased it, I don't think I would necessarily, or like, you know, like scratched it off or something, or wore it off, like with the rock, like slowly wore it away, you know, rock on rock. I might not even be able to notice. Um, but anyway, it's physically painful for me to hear that, that she did that. And this is paint, to be fair, so it will fade. Petroglyphs, pictographs are painted on, um, like rock art. Petroglyphs, I said pictograph is painted on, yes. Petroglyphs are pecked, pecked on. Uh, and usually, actually, from what I think some more recent, in the last like decade or so, uh, info that's come out, some new data that's come out, is uh, with like special like image scanning, we can actually see that a lot of petroglyphs did actually used to have, at least in North America, used to have paint on them. They were, they were both pictographs and petroglyphs at the same time. Uh, so sometimes when like a petroglyph, like the pecked one looks kind of funny, you're like, like not funny, but like, you know, you're like, why? It's so, it's just like a couple of weird geometric shapes or something. Like, what is it? There are ones that are just geometric shapes to be fair, but <laughs> then sometimes like you'll look at one, maybe you think they're uh, three distinct shapes. There's a better example. You think, oh, it's three distinct shapes. And then you do like the special like photo imaging on it. And you'll realize that there was actually like three to four colors like a painting like a figure and that those those shapes were actually together uh as a figure of some sort like anthropomorph or whatever you know so it's cool stuff i'm still dying inside a little bit because she did that i, I get it art and like the nature of like you know transients and all that stuff but still 
Have you always been a painter? I've always painted. But I wasn't a painter until I was driven out of Banur. Up there, the markings are eternal. They paint over the same lines, the same colors, over and over. Oh. As a child, I learned from copying them. As I grew, my heart sank at the familiarity. All of us Banuk might as well be trapped in glacier ice. We have the look of life, but never really moving. Who is it? It's there's a poet that talks about that. Was it, it was Keats? John Keats or Tennyson? One of the like eighteen hundreds, like American. I think it was American, like romance poets. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, British too. I conflate the two. I can't tell. I don't know. They all sound the same. Uh well, to be okay, that's not like totally true. Maybe William Blake. One of them was like really, in, and it was the one who actually died early too, like fairly young. Um, they wrote a lot about like how like life is transient and like how like art and existence will fade, you know. And at some points, like he embraced it, and at some points he was afraid of it, you know. Um, and then there was another poet, poet, poet in like opposition that was like you know about like the like. How, how things last, you know, the, the, how things will last, like, for eons, like, ideas, people, cultures, you know, a variety of things. Um, and those two are juxtaposed, and I wish my freaking English degree, I remembered any of it. <laughs> but it's all good, it's fine. Okay. Oh. A badger, a badger? There's badgers and goats up here? Blue gleam map. I don't even know blue gleam. Oh, these are what I sold. Mm. I didn't think. Pigments. I didn't realize there was going to be more collectibles up here. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. I should check the other merchants. These pigments you want. Where should I look for them? Salts gather at the edges of geysers and hot pools. Crystals cling to the rocks and cliffs. Anyway, so I got distracted a little bit, but I understand like where like, cause I think I was listening to like a podcast or an audiobook about like Egyptian art. And like, there was a movement again that I can't remember the specifics of because my brain is a sieve that tried to like change it up a little bit, like change like, like it's still like, potentially to like the you know like my eye or so, you know, like an average layman's eye like mine you know we wouldn't be able to tell the difference necessarily but there were like subtle and like some not so subtle changes to like the art style i think it was oh my gosh akhenaten the 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 king who decided to i think it was yes 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 it was the king who decided to go to monotheistic worship like in the middle of like oh i don't remember which era but like it wasn't like Cleopatra or anything like they still had they worship multiple gods but it was like Akhenaten I think is his name who wanted to worship only one god uh, so monotheism and he actually moved the capital of Egypt into like the middle of nowhere like before I think it had been closer to like was it Memphis I don't know um but he moved it out into like the middle of nowhere basically um and tried to make that a capital I think for like 18 years and he tried to like he was like a big patron of the arts and stuff like that and was really trying to kind of champion a different art style for like the like the wall mosaic oh, mosaics what is my my I'm, I'm actually starving too which doesn't help um but Egyptian art he was trying to change like what they put on the tombs and stuff like that uh and eventually that crashed and burned after his death and his queen and his son ended up going back to the original capital and like being like yeah that was a weird interlude uh we're gonna go back to polytheism multiple gods uh but it was an interesting time anyway it, it kind of crashed and burned but it was interesting they could experiment a little bit but then they went right back into like the traditional way of doing things you know because like consistency to them meant like steadfastness and like um the opposite of transience essentially that like things will continue on this way and forever kind of how they viewed the afterlife in, in many ways was that like it was a continuation of the real world and that you brought with you the things that you wanted to take with you into the afterlife you know so 
a consistency was important for that. Like, mindset. The Banuk rock paintings are impressive, but, um... You want to know what they mean? That's not the right question, but... I'll answer anyway. Some are called to the machines. The sacred shapes you see on metal casings, or on a cauldron door. Do the machines listen to the call? I don't know. <laughs> Others, like mine, are called to the tribe. You could say, inspiration or prophecy. And sometimes even men listen, if the painting is loud enough. Even men listen? So do only women paint? No, because that guy was painting stuff. I think it was him that was painting stuff. Or she just means men like people. <laughs> I'll see what I can find for you. Seek out the vibrant ones. A spring of sudden color among snow or rock or metal. That's its own reward. But I'd reward you as well. <laughs> I'm not an artist, so thank you. Getting up to her is certainly a... Can I jump on that? Okay, good. Stay out of our way, Outlander. I, we have enough worries. I just landed on your head. Oh my gosh, I should call this one here. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and listening to me ramble about things that I only half know, but that I really enjoy. So thank you so much for watching. And really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons. Uh, thank you so much to all of you, but especially to Reese Goito, my sapling tier patron. A special thank you to you. And to Christopher, my tree tier patron, who is the super bestest. Thank you so, so much for all your support. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you all in the next one.